Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing my author spotlight on Lauren Willig. I actually filmed this once and I started to edit it and realized that I hadn't really done the best of jobs in explaining the Pink Carnation series. And so I decided to go ahead and film it again. And so here are my thoughts. So I'm first going to talk about the secret history of the Pink Carnation and the series that this is a part of. So I'm not going to talk about each individual book because spoilers, um, but I will give you sort of an overview or a little bit of a jumping off point for this series. So this series is told in dual perspectives. So we have a modern component and we have a historical component to all of the books except for Mischief Under the Mistletoe, which is like the holiday book. That one does not have a modern component. But for all the rest of them, the modern component sort of like is the thread that ties them together. And it's also sort of a catalyst for moving the overall story forward. So our modern component narrator is Eloise. And Eloise is a um, sort of scholar. She is working on a dissertation about spies during the Napoleonic Wars. And... So the historical perspective that we get with the spies are the spies that she is researching. And so as she finds a different spy or a different, you know, part of the story to what she's researching for her dissertation, we learn about a new spy and a new character or, you know, we learn more about a character that we were already familiar with but we didn't really have their whole story. So like I said, we sort of follow... Eloise as she is working on her dissertation in England and she meets Colin and Colin is also tied into the historical perspective because he is a descendant of one of the spies and that's not a spoiler we find that out relatively quickly into the book um, or into the first book uh, so we sort of follow through the modern perspective as the story continues through all 12 books we find out more about Eloise and about Colin's family and Eloise's relationship to Colin and his family and it's pretty interesting. I had there's some books where I don't love the modern component and there are other books where I really love the modern component. So I think that it's it's sort of a mixed bag. We dip in and out of the historical and the modern component throughout the series and I think that that works well because it it serves to move the story forward in different ways each time so that is sort of the structure of the books now the each book like I said is sort of like a different story of a different spy and it's also sort of like a mini romance because the Pink Carnation books fall into what I guess is the historical romance genre I'm not really sure about that entirely just because I've seen her books, Lauren Willig's books, in historical fiction, fiction, and then I see them also categorized as historical romances. So I'm not really sure. There are definitely romance components to all of the books, and they are warm, fuzzy, you know, happy ending type stories. And that is, I feel like that's not a spoiler to say that because one, you read any review on Goodreads and that's something that people always say. But also because I think that is part of the the thing that makes me want to read them is because sometimes you're just not in the mood for a book like Game of Thrones where you don't know what's going to happen to the characters or you don't know if they're going to get happy endings or things like that. So I think that that is something about this series that appeals to me when I want to read it. Um, I find that these books are really good sort of light fluffy reads. I love them as summer reads and for some reason I always want to bring one of her books with me when I'm flying on an airplane or like traveling because I just find that they hold my attention really well and they are a lot of fun and so I, I don't get bored of them and I think that the dipping in and out of the modern historical perspective helps with that because it sort of feels like you're getting two stories at once. Um, but I think that these are great summer reads and great sort of light reads. I would not go into this thinking it's going to be like life-changing. They're definitely something that's more on your, your fun side of your reading rather than your like literary fiction kind of things. So the next book that I'm going to talk about is The Ashford Affair. And this book is 
the it, I read it somewhere in the middle of reading the Pink Carnation series. So I don't think I mentioned this. The Pink Carnation series is 12 books and the 12th one comes out in August and then it will be wrapped up. But I read this one somewhere along like book six of the Pink Carnation series and I had not read anything else by Lauren Willig up to that point that wasn't part of that series. She has, I think, two other books, but I have not read them, so forgive me, this is not an all-encompassing review of her books. Um, but The Ashford Affair is, again, told in that dual perspective sort of format where we have a modern portion which follows Clemmy, and Clemmy works for a law firm, and she is, you know, got a lot of things going for her, but she is starting to realize that maybe not everything is going the way that she wanted it to go and she starts to sort of unravel certain things in her life and she's at a birthday party for her grandmother that and it's her grandmother's 99th birthday party and she overhears or is becomes privy to some information that her family might not be what it seems and that there might be some pretty big secrets to be uncovered and so she starts sort of looking into that and that introduces us to the historical part of this book which follows the narrator of Addie and Addie is orphaned when she's pretty young and she goes to live with her cousin B, who's this beautiful like bombshell outgoing just you know crazy girl and she and B are as close as can be, can be but they have a falling out at some point and so we start to sort of I want to say that it's told sort of in reverse like we know that they had a falling out before we really see their relationship as it was before the falling out and so we sort of follow Addie to figure out what that falling out was and how it affected her life and how it affects Clemmy's life and it's really fantastic. There was a twist or two, and some of them I did not see coming, and I'm usually pretty good at picking those things out, especially in her books, just because I am used to her writing style. Um, but I, I thought that this book had plenty of surprises, and it, it takes place in, the modern component takes place in New York, the historical one takes place in England as well as in Kenya, and I thought the setting was really interesting and different from anything that I had seen her do before and yeah I just thought that this one was fantastic and really well written and I if you don't want to start with the series I think that I would recommend starting with The Ashford Affair because it's a great example of her writing style and it's also just a fun and interesting read. So the next book that I have to show you is That Summer and I picked this one up shortly after it came out because I was really excited that she was putting out another standalone book. And this is, again, has a historical and a modern perspective. The modern perspective follows a girl named Julia who, her, her life's sort of falling apart and she finds out that her great aunt has left her this house in England. And she hasn't been back to England since her mom died in a car crash when she was really little. And like she and her dad don't talk about um, her mom or about her mother's family or anything like that and so she sort of thinks it's a joke but decides since everything else is sort of falling apart that she's gonna go and sort through this house and sell it and then she can take the money and do what she will. So she goes over to England and in doing so she starts to get to know some of her family in England as well as sort of has have a lot of she there are a lot of questions that she comes up with while she's sorting through this stuff at her great aunt's house or her house rather and that's where we sort of get introduced into the historical perspective well in the historical perspective we follow a woman named Imogen who is in a loveless marriage and she basically is miserable and she has this stepdaughter that she loves and is basically the only thing that keeps her going and then she is asked to sit for a portrait and strikes up sort of an unlikely friendship with an artist named Gavin Thorne. And this sort of follows her life in that loveless marriage, living in this house, and the sort of journey of, of the portrait that Gavin is painting of her and everything that sort of develops between her and Evie and Gavin and her husband Arthur and it's it's really kind of an interesting story. I didn't love this one as much as I love The Ashford Affair. I felt like 
when I got to the end of this book, I still had a lot of questions. And I remember reading uh, Lauren Willig say that this book did not come easy to her when she was writing it. And I felt like it showed a little in the ending because to me, the book was was progressing on a really nice track and it was really well written and interesting and I was really sort of attached to these characters. And then we got to the end and I felt like it was really rushed and a lot of things were left to your imagination. And that can work sometimes, but I felt like it didn't work here as much. That said, I still would recommend this book. I think it's an interesting read and maybe it won't feel so rushed to you. I just, I just sort of think I expected a little bit more of this given how it was progressing initially. And I think that of her books that the modern component in this one was my least favorite. I didn't think, I didn't really find Julia all that interesting, but I did really enjoy this. I ended up giving it three stars, I think, but I probably would have given it four if the ending had been a little more solid. All right, so if you are interested in reading Lauren Willig's books, I personally would say start with the Pink Carnation series, but if you do not want to start with a series or you, you don't think that you can, you know, get invested in a series right now, then definitely pick up The Ashford Affair. She does also have two books coming out this year. One is obviously the 12th book in the Pink Carnation series and the second one is called The Other Daughter and I am dying to get my hands on this. This one sounds so interesting and from what I understand it is going to be her first book that does not have dual perspectives. So it's just a one perspective book so I'm interested to see how she does that. Um, I may do some sort of follow-up down the line because I know that she's also working on a book coming out in 2016, so there are going to be a lot of things coming from her down the pipeline, and I hope that you guys enjoyed this and that you maybe pick up one of her books. If you do, or if you have read some of hers in the past, I would love to hear either what you're going to pick up or what you have read of hers. And if you've read that summer, I'd be interested to know how you felt about the ending. Not maybe in the comments because that would be very spoilerly, spoilery, but um, maybe send me a message on Goodreads or on Twitter or something because I, I don't know anybody else that's read this book and I don't know, it, I, I wanted to talk about it. <laughs> Alright, well I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you next time. Bye!